Okay, so let's take a look at what are the negatives, right? People wanted all that compatibility because it made their life easier. The internet was not really around, so I don't even really talk about that much, but there was dial up and, and stuff like that and AOL. I should do a segment on that, but anyway, um, they love that compatibility. Well, of course, any company wants to become a monopoly. All companies strive to become a monopoly, even if they say they don't want to, because once you become a monopoly, you can do whatever you want. Microsoft was never really truthful with themselves. Once the Windows 95 hit and they did all their shady practices with making sure that you couldn't get any other operating system other than Windows 95, uh, it became the worldwide standard and they benefited from that. As an example, for some reason, the Word, Excel, PowerPoint uh, team didn't much suffer from the following, the, what I'm describing. They really kept cranking it out, and even though they were the majority and could have slowed down. For the most part, they just kept innovating on those sides, not so much in PowerPoint, but definitely in Excel and Word. They were the best product to use because they were the best product to use. But Microsoft believed that everybody had chosen, they lied to themselves basically, everybody had chosen Windows 95 because that's the best thing that was out there. And Windows 95 was good, again, I can run some old DOS program in Windows 95 or a brand new Windows 95 program or a Windows 3.1 program. I can run it all. Not flawlessly, but they did the best they could to get that to work right. So it was, it was a really good operating system. But another one out there was OS2. IBM built that one. Hugely, massively stable, much more powerful than Microsoft stuff. Uh, but nobody got to see that because it was very rarely offered. In other words, I got a computer, it came with Windows 95 on it, and I can go out for some extra money and go buy OS 2. Why, why would I want to do that? This is working just fine for me, right? So there was some shady deals there that Microsoft later on did not take into account. And so basically, if you fast forward this, uh, what I'm trying to tell you is that if Microsoft had understood how they became, was honest with themselves about how they became the dominant OS out there, then they would have been able to adapt quicker and not be in the situation they are now, right? Microsoft controlled so much, not so much anymore, right? They tried phones and they died. Uh, they abandoned that and went on, you know, and even to a certain extent, they have abandon Windows to a certain extent. So the results of not understanding social factors, I use Microsoft in this situation. I already used uh, Apple in the situation of not understanding that people wanted to continue to use what they had and bringing them forward. Well, Microsoft's is much later, right? They dominate everything now until something happens. That thing uh, begins with the iPod. Okay, so that's just a little niche thing. It plays some music. That's all it does. But that saves Apple. We won't get into all of that. So they didn't see the big music, digital music thing. Microsoft didn't. They, they finally bring out a product called the Zune. And by the time they get done, their last revision of the Zune, the thing is fantastic. But it wasn't fantastic when they started. And that was a difference in another philosophy that I don't really talk about in this class of the fact that when the first iPod came out from Apple, it was really good. It was something that you would have wanted to own, not, oh, this is kind of good, but it's got these problems and someday hopefully they'll fix them. That was always Microsoft's approach. In any case, um, then Apple gets into the situation where everybody's starting to get, grab these smartphones and these smartphones are, uh-oh, they're playing music. The processors in the phones are getting powerful enough to not just be a phone, but to also play music. So their market's going to disappear for their, their iPod. So they make a smartphone. Now, smartphones have already been around. There's Everybody tells Apple, you guys are idiots. It's You're doomed. Can't believe what a stupid company you guys are. Um, there's no way you're succeeding. Your phone's too huge. Uh, doesn't do enough. It doesn't have a physical keyboard. There's all sorts of things you can go read on them. They're pretty funny now, right? But back then, that's what they said. Of course, the iPhone does gangbusters, and all of a sudden, Google, 
who is realizing that, hey, we don't have control over the operating systems. So that means the people that own the operating systems can just screw us out of searches, right? We can say we're not going to use Google. So they want their own OS. So good place to start this phone thing. They actually switch. So you can say, uh, you can go out there and look and, and search for the first unreleased uh, Google Android operating system. And you'll note that it's like the, their, who they were competing with at the time, which was BlackBerry. So it's menu-based system. And then all of a sudden the iPhone comes out and it's an exact copy of what, what they did. In any case, so Microsoft then tries to update their mobile operating system like three or four years later and doesn't really get anywhere. And then this next big thing happens. Apple releases an iPad and they don't think anything's going to happen with this iPad because after all, it's just a big iPhone. Uh, and they had already released a tablet. So they had released a tablet back in 2001. It's a niche market. Right, some people like it, some people don't. That's how they viewed it. And you can watch Bill Gates's quotes on that and, and uh, Steve Ballmer's quotes on that. That basically it's like, that's a niche market. You know, Apple will probably have some success there, but we've been doing this for years. That was their attitude. And the thing just sells millions, right? Tens of millions. And Apple themselves are like, um, why are people buying these? <laughs> you know, why do they want them? And there's a slew of reasons. The, the biggest one at the time is that it was an internet that didn't crash and it was a better experience than internet on your phone, right? It was the tablet. And, and there wasn't much else you could do on it. It just was no crashing internet and the internet um, was a better experience than a phone and you could get email on it. That's where it started. And it still sold millions. Well, it was such a massive success that it freaked <clears throat> Microsoft out. It freaked Dell out, the Dell Corporation, it freaked HP out because what they have been seeing over those past few years is a decline, and I've explained this in other classes, a decline in PC sales, notebook sales. They're going down. People aren't buying as many. And that makes sense because the, the processing power got to the point where it was doing pretty much everything you needed it to do. So I don't need to go out and buy another one every three years. And so PC sales, notebook sales this way, iPad sales this way. If you don't make a tablet, that doesn't seem good for you, right? And that's when HP came out and said, we don't just make PCs. We are innovators that do a ton of stuff. And they started investing in all these different areas. Dell came out and said, no, we don't just sell PCs. We're solutions providers. They started making all these comments because they're seeing the actual numbers. So society isn't because they don't give a crap, right? They're not watching that stuff. It really shook up the market more than people want to admit that it did. What Microsoft did, Bill Gates is now retired, right? And so what Microsoft did is build Windows 8. That's what they did. So because they didn't understand the social factors what happened was they're like, oh crap, we really have to have this tablet thing figured out. People are moving away from standard computers and they're using tablets. And our operating system is old and built for, for computers. It's built for a mouse, it's built for a keyboard. We need something more dynamic than that. We need something where somebody can use a mouse and a keyboard and use touch interface. And so they just pushed on everybody Windows 8, even though everybody really liked Windows 7. Like Windows 8, here you go. And it was totally tablet-based. Uh, it was such a gut reaction from them. It was half-baked. It was really a poor implementation. Look up some of the videos on my grandfather trying to use Windows 8. They didn't have a start button. Uh, they had no X's on any of the programs to close them. You had basically no idea how to use this touch interface unless you looked at it right at the beginning and remembered all of it, right? And so basically uh, what they did was say, well, if we can get people to like Windows 8, which is all these, these big tiles, right? Not just tiles on the start menu, but that's where you can put it in tablet mode and everything's tiles. Really a, a sweet interface. It was re really nice. It was just poorly implemented by them. Um, 
then they can get those people to stop buying iPads and buy their computers that are now tablets, right? Because they don't control the hardware market. And as a matter of fact, that's when um, some of the tablets that were being made by HP and Dell were crap. And so that's when Microsoft first started to release their hardware. And, you know, if you want some awesome hardware, buy a Surface Book, buy a Surface Pro, buy those things are, are really solid soft uh, hardware. That's when when basically all those years, Microsoft has been saying, no, Apple's got it wrong. You don't want to make the hardware and the software came around to, holy crap, we need to make the hardware and the software because we're making the software and these other companies aren't doing what they need to do to keep us on top. So Windows 8 was a big part of that, right? So that's, that's really what I put here is designed for tablets and mobile devices. And it was a very heavy handed approach to the progress, forcing all their users to use 8. Everybody was pissed off and a lot of people actually went out and bought Apple products because you could use the Mac OS and it was very familiar to the iOS and because it's built on it, and it was just a lot less trouble. So they, they pushed people out of their ecosystem by this approach. Finally, finally, when Windows 10 is getting released, the pre-release event here of Windows 10, the CEO who is uh, Stadia, he's still there, um, he said, he stated this, they didn't want people to use Microsoft because they have to. They want them to use Windows because they love to. So all of that growing pain was the fact that they thought, ridiculously, that people used Windows because they really liked Windows. No, that's why they chose Windows 95 partially, right? You didn't even get another option, right? So you didn't get to choose. And then they just did whatever they wanted. You know, Vista was a big um, blunder because it was massive and huge and didn't run on most people's computers, right? They, they did whatever they want. They functioned like a monopoly. There was no competition to them. And the, the iPhone and iPad coming from Mac and their continued Mac production um, from Apple uh, broke through that and made them wake up to uh, why do people use Windows? Because they have to, that's why people use Windows and not because it's the best. And of course, now we see a huge difference. Uh, Windows 10 is really nice to use. The fine tuning that they've done in it from seven is fantastic um, because to see they've got competition and they came so late that they their phones are dead. They're barely surviving on their tablets, right? But if they had, understood these social influences from before, they would have realized we need to innovate, right? We need to do what we're doing with Word and Excel, which is always on the top, which is always doing what their customers want. And instead of just pulling our customers where we want them to be, we need to be pulled by our customers. And that that's just a huge example of how uh, it really came to hurt them. So to the point that, right, they cut off tons of stuff that they could be doing because they've had to trim back what they're producing. Otherwise, they'll just die because they're spending too much money. So had Microsoft realized much of their success froze from the need for compatibility, people not wanting to learn multiple operating systems to get the job done, and people not able to learn multiple operating systems, if they had understand, understood these are why people are using this, then they would have understood that, well, we still need to keep up on our progress. We need to give them what they need. Um, but they didn't understand those things at all. All right, so anyway, that's the end of that information. Uh, the next little video that I'm gonna talk about is the PC as a hub. And, and that was a big deal in the 90s and why it was a big deal and why that's been changing.